Ron Brown with Tech for Seniors. Sleep tracking with a watch. Hocus Pocus? How does it work? Does it work? Which one is the best? Stay tuned and watch this video and you'll find out. Sleep trackers. How do they work? How do they gather the data? Today we're going to look at the Fitbit Sense and the Galaxy Watch 4. And we're going to do a head-to-head -head comparison and see which one is the best. Now, full disclaimer, I purchased both these watches out of my hard-earned retirement money. I am not sponsored, and the opinions in this video are mine alone. Now, remember, if you like this video, please click the like. And if you want to subscribe to the channel, we'd sure appreciate it because it would help make more videos. Now, let's get on with the show. So, what is sleep? We need to define this before we can analyze it. Well, sleep is a naturally recurring state of mind and body, characterized by altered consciousness. Of course, we go to sleep, we get a bit tired. Relatively inhibited sensory activity. In other words, we don't hear or see. And reduced muscle activity and inhibition of nearly all voluntary muscles during REM sleep. Have you ever noticed if you have a bad dream and you're trying to call out, you can't call? That's because when your eyes are moving fast and you're in REM sleep, your muscles are paralyzed. Interesting, eh? With reduced interactions with surroundings, it is distinguished from wakefulness by a decreased ability to react to stimuli. You can usually push people and they probably wouldn't wake up. Some do if they're in a lighter sleep, but deep sleep you probably wouldn't but more reactive than a coma or disorders of consciousness with sleep displaying different active brain patterns. Well, let's look at these brain patterns now. Sleep is made up of four stages. There's the awake stage. We then move into a light sleep stage, then a deeper sleep, followed by a lighter sleep, which is REM or the rapid eye movement sleep. So the four stages of sleep are awake, light sleep, deep sleep, and REM sleep. So let's look at the stages of sleep. Stage one is a light sleep or the awake sleep, and this is just as you're closing your eyes and moving into a uh, early sleep stage. Then we have the light sleep, and this is where, or stage two, and this is where your heart rate slows down and your body temperature goes down a bit. Then we moved into a deep sleep, and deep sleep is where the repair of your muscles and organs in your body occurs. This is where all the healing occurs. It's like the fountain of youth. If we could just make all our sleep deep sleep, we would probably get younger as we get older. Pretty cool, eh? But deep sleep is where the big stuff happens. Then we're followed by uh, REM, which is the rapid eye movement sleep. This usually follows deep sleep and is a much lighter sleep. But remember, your eyes are moving and you're paralyzed. Interesting. We'll see how this works in a minute. Now through the night, you go through different sleep cycles. And how many cycles you go through is highly variable. But in this diagram, you'll see that we have about um, five cycles that someone would have gone through. And you'll see that they, you move from stage one, stage two, stage three, stage four, you get into deep sleep, then it, as you um, come out of the sleep, you, there's a period of REM, and then you go back down. And so through your night, you go through different cycles of these stages of sleep. And this is how it normally works. Polysomnography. Oh boy, I get to use some complicated terminology. Well, I'm a doctor, I should be able to do that, right? So polysomnography. No, it's polysomnography. There you go. And this is the art of actually recording and interpreting your sleep. And how we do this is through a polysomnogram, or a PSG. And this is done by someone who might be a polysonographer. Right, that's right. So this is the art of defining and analyzing your sleep patterns overnight. Now, if you see on the left-hand side of your screen, you'll see a gentleman who is hooked up and you'll see some stickies on his head. These are, of course, the EEG. You'll see a little um, uh, 
pulse oximeter on his finger. We're going to measure his oxygen. And you'll also see some sticky things on his chest. We're going to do his ECG. And there's multiple other sensors on there leading to an analysis overnight, which is called a polysomnogram or APSG. And this is what would be produced in a sleep lab to diagnose the different stages of sleep. So how does a watch do that? Certainly when you wear your watch overnight and it tells you all these sleep things, it's not having all that stuff stuck all over you. It's doing it through the sensors in the back of the watch. Now what do these sensors measure? Well, they measure your respiratory rate, heart rate, heart rate variability, movement, and temperature. Those are the basic sensors that we have in the back of our watch and both the Fitbit Sense and Galaxy Watch 4 have. So how does it take that information and tell you what your brain waves are doing? Hold on here. Remember, the sleep analysis that we just looked at is, is brain waves in your brain. How do they take those, those features we just discussed and come up with how much REM sleep you had? Well, that's very interesting. And that's what we call an algorithm. And this is how each of the companies do it. And they have their own proprietary algorithm. They take that data and come up with the results, which we're going to talk about today. Now, how do they do that? They won't tell us. And each proprietary standard is different. And there are no standards. Each device has its own calculation. And do you know you get a $10 watch that has sensors on it that will tell you exactly how you slept at night? But nobody knows how they create the data. There's a great deal of variation, as you'll see today in our analysis between the devices. And there certainly is no standardization to medical definition. So I took my Fitbit Sense on one wrist and my Galaxy Watch 4 on the other and went to bed. I did this for three nights and analyzed the data. So let's see what I found. So before we look at the data, I'd like you to look at my medical history. Later in life, I had a more difficult time sleeping. At my request about four years ago, I was diagnosed with sleep apnea and have worn a CPAP machine while sleeping. The CPAP machine probably saved my life. I can plead with you. If you think you have sleep apnea, please get checked out because it really is a life-changing experience to finally be able to sleep. I still have problems getting to sleep, though. Uh, I don't take any sleeping medication, and I don't take any medication that would interfere with my sleep. Now, as you can see in the diagram here on the right side, my sleep surroundings are excellent. This is day one. Now my assessment of how I slept was a little less than average. Now let's look at the time slept. How, how long did I sleep for that night? Well, I look in the center, you'll see my CPAP recording, and this is the time on the CPAP machine was seven hours and 22 minutes. Now this is pretty exact because when I wear my CPAP machine, I put it on just as I get into bed and I take it off when I get out of bed. So this is the, we know this is the exact time that I had the CPAP machine on. Now in some CPAP machines that might say something about sleep time, this is a misnomer. The number you see here is simply time on machine. Now if you look on the left side in the dark area, you'll see it, the Galaxy Watch 4 tells me I slept for six hours and 23 minutes uh, and it did an analysis and said my sleep sore is 59 and we'll talk a little bit about that in a minute. On the right side it says the Fitbit Sense said my sleep time was five hours and 15 minutes. Okay well a little bit of difference there. Now if you look down on the Galaxy Watch 4 you'll see that the graph shows that I started out sleep and then I went into a deep sleep then I came up and then uh, I was uh, had some REM sleep and then woke up around, uh, around midnight, probably to have a pee, then back down into sleep, but I didn't get back into deep sleep. Anyway, you can follow the graph along there and you'll see about 3 a.m. things started to go wrong and I just couldn't really sleep, tossed and turned, probably worried about a show or something that I was doing. And so I didn't have a, a super good night. 
and look at the data, you can see the various sleep stages and the time that I was in those stages. Now the same thing happens over on the other side. If you look at the Fitbit Sense, you'll see the graph below and all the different stages that I was in. <clears throat> but if you compare the analysis between the Galaxy Watch 4 and the Fitbit Sense, you'll see that in deep sleep, the Fitbit Sense said that I had 42 minutes of deep sleep. Whereas the Galaxy Watch 4 said I only had 16 minutes. Well, that's a big difference. Uh, the Galaxy Watch 4 said that I had I was in light sleep for around four hours, and the um, Fitbit Sense said I was in light sleep for four hours and 18 minutes. Uh, the, the Galaxy Watch 4 showed me as sort of the early stages of sleep is one hour and 21 minutes, but the Fitbit Sense only said I was in that stage for 47 minutes. So right off the bat, you can see that while the total time was fairly, fairly straightforward between the two, the actual analysis of the different stages is really quite different. Uh, also, the assessment of my sleep was probably right on. Uh, both the Fitbit Sense and Galaxy Watch 4 rated me as fair, and I think that was a reasonable assessment of how I slept and my clinical analysis of that. So let's look at day two. All right, so this is day two, and I had a terrible sleep. My mind was racing, I couldn't sleep very well, and my evaluation of my sleep that night was just terrible. Okay, so let's look at what actually happened. So if you look in the center, you'll see, yes, my CPAP machine was on for eight hours. In fact, I was in bed hooked up to my machine for eight hours. Well, let's see how much of that I slept. Well, the Galaxy Watch 4 uh, gave me a very poor score at 26, and I would agree with that. I don't think that was a, a very good assessment. I don't think I slept very well. All right, let's uh, see what my actual sleep time was for hours. Well, okay, how did that compare to the Fitbit Sense? Well, again, the Fitbit Sense got it almost right at four hours and 19 minutes. That's pretty pretty, pretty, uh, pretty close, both of them. But let's again look at the stages of sleep. All right, we have deep sleep on the Fitbit Sense of 56 minutes, and we have no deep sleep at all in the, um, with the uh, Galaxy Watch 4. But first, what did we learn? Well, we learned that sleep scores vary between devices. We know that stages of sleep are recorded differently, and the time spent in each stage is highly variable. I had a great sleep on day three. I went, I had a great sleep, and I went back to sleep a little bit later as well, and you can see that in my sleep score. So let's look at the, again, the time on with my CPAP machine, which means the time I was in bed connected to the machine was eight hours and 35 minutes. Well, that's pretty good, I think. And the Galaxy Watch 4 agreed with me. They said that I was uh, sleeping for eight hours and 16 minutes. That's pretty cool. And they gave me a sleep score of 64. Well, that was certainly a lot better than the 24 I got with the poor sleep. So yes, that, that makes sense. Let's go look over and say, see what the Fitbit Sense said. Well, they said I didn't have a good night's sleep. They gave me a poor rating. And they said my sleep time was two hours and 39 minutes. What? Two hours and 39 minutes versus eight hours and 16 minutes. There's something different here. So what value are sleep trackers? Well, Dr. Alan Schwartz at the Sleep Disorder Center at John Hopkins Bayview Medical Center says, while sleep trackers can collect a lot of information about your slumber habits, there's one important thing they generally don't do, he says, and they don't measure sleep directly. Instead, they often measure inactivity as a surrogate for examining sleep, he explains. Most sleep tracking devices make some guesstimate as to how much you're actually sleeping. And here's the fact, is that these algorithms that take the data that the sleep trackers collect are guessing. And that's why there's such a high variability between individual sleep trackers. So the final word for exact data about your sleep habits, 
you'd have to do a medical sleep study, remember that we talked about earlier, which monitors brainwave activity to analyze the various stages of sleep that you cycle through each night. Now, how do sleep trackers you wear around the wrist work? They guess. They guess at the data that they're getting. And it's highly variable. So in summary, tracking devices are useful to observe trends in your sleep. It allows you to modify your environment, food take, alcohol use, or local surroundings and see results. It also allows you to develop more interest in a serious problem that can affect your health, insomnia. Also, it provides some user-friendly graphs and reports that are helpful to reflect on, but not replace the medical advice from your healthcare provider. So which watch won? <laughs> well, that's hard to know. I think that they're probably about the same. I think the results of sleep tracking are amusing at best. It's Ron Brown with Tech for Senior. Please watch my upcoming video called The Misunderstood Galaxy Watch 4, which should be out in about a week. Till we meet again, have a great day.